We, we need to find it within. And, and the thing that I tell people is that you can't love somebody more than you love yourself. It's just impossible. How could you do that, right? How could I teach you to juggle any better than I can juggle? I can't juggle. So that's going to be tough. The other piece is I can't let anybody love me more than I love myself. So if you try to love me more than if, if I can only love myself a three on a scale of 10 and you want to love me at an eight, because that's your nature is to be so loving. I won't let you. I will put up enough walls and enough barricades and, and, and hide and run, you know, because anything over a three, I, I, I can't accept because that's outside my, my own perception. So kind of going back to being here to get our hearts broken, because most of us are walking around thinking, well, at best, I'm a, I'm a three or four or five lovable. Many don't even, many, they're in the minus. I'm not lovable at all. I'm, I'm not. So what we do is because we're afraid of people finding out how unlovable we are, as we're trying to get love, we armor up. Uh, Pima Chodron, a Buddhist monk, talks about this in her book, The, uh, the um, Wisdom of No Escape. It's a series of lectures. And she's very humorous about it. You know, our, our armors are different. Some have this big, tough leather armor, and it's, it's strapped on with cord. Some people, have, you know, there's zippers all over it, this protective armor that we've got. Um, you know, some might have, you know, this 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 kind of a knight's mail, the, you know, the 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 tough armor. And then we got our offensive weapons. You know, it might be a big sword or a lightsaber or or or, or, or a cerebic tongue, or our ability to criticize and cut down. And and so all the while we're looking for love. We're armored up with our defensive, you know, protection to keep anybody from possibly hurting us. And we got our offensive weaponry. So if you're going to hurt me, I'm going to hurt you first. Kind of like from a Leonard Cohen song, Hallelujah. All I learned from love is how to shoot somebody who I drew you. I'm thinking that's what we learned from love. I, 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 yeah, if, I look, if you look like you're going for your holster and your gun, your weapon, I'll shoot you first. That's love. That's how we're trying. So, so this whole thing, I'm going to go find someone to love me. And we don't believe we're even lovable. And so we're protected, so I'm not going to let you hurt me. And we have our weaponry, so I'm going to get you first if you try to get me. And we're trying to find love? I mean, is it starting to make sense why most of us have not really succeeded in that journey? So I'm a big believer of, of, of going inward. And, and one of the most powerful ways I've found to, to feel lovable is to, to honor myself, to take really good care of me to take responsibility for getting my needs met, um, for, for being, for filling my bucket to overflowing. And then whatever, and that overflow is the love, the, how I can love God, how I can love my neighbor. You can't love God from an empty bucket. You can't love your neighbor from an empty bucket. You got to fill your own bucket. I, I know I'm mentioning a lot of books, but another one, Scott Peck's The Road Less Traveled. Uh, I'm told that's the all-time best-selling self-help book. And I, and I realize I need to keep mentioning it more because most young interviewers I mention it to get a blank stare like they never heard of it. But it's the all-time best-selling you know, self-help book. So maybe there's a reason to check it out. So he talks in there that if a child has parents that are attentive to, 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 to their needs and respond to those needs, he says, in timely and judicious ways. I add consistent ways. The child internalizes an emotional belief, not an intellectual belief, but an emotional belief. I'm valuable. I'm lovable. My needs are important. And the world is like my family. So when I go out into the world, the world's going to be just like my parents were. All, ch all children believe that. So can you imagine going to your first day of school, kindergarten, believing I'm valuable, I'm lovable, my needs are important, and kindergarten's going to, you know, you know, reinforce that. Kindergarten, they're all going to love me, and they're going to help me get my needs met. You imagine junior high, your first girlfriend, you know, coming into adulthood in your first job interview. You know, I'm lovable, I'm valuable. They all see that, and they want to help me get my needs met. Can you imagine how the world would unfold differently? If we were like that now, of course, most of us majority never had that kind of consistent experience as children. And if you add one more to it, if we didn't get our needs met in timely, judicious, consistent ways, if you add, if our parents used us in any way to meet their needs, you know, parentified us, um, you know, I, for my father, I played sports. And so that gave him great value. 
or my mother. I was different from my father and I listened to her talk about her problems. So that gave me great value. That when a child is used to meet the parents' needs, they also internalize another belief is that I'm not good enough. So, and the world's like my family. So most of us go to kindergarten. I'm not particularly lovable. My needs aren't important and I'm not good enough. And kindergarten is going to be all about that. And then that's how we go about living our life. No wonder we're armored up. No wonder we got our weaponry, right? So none of that changes until we can love ourselves. And so I'm a big believer as an, if, if that works for children, meeting their needs in consistent, timely, and judicious ways to give them a sense of that they are lovable, they're valuable, why wouldn't that work for adults? And I promise you, since I've really been highly paying attention to what are my needs, what are my wants, how can I take action to meet those needs and wants? How, I can, how can I surround myself with people who want to help me get my needs and wants met? Um, I think I've become a much more loving person, much less critical, much less bitter, much less judgmental, um, less guarded, more generous. And, and so I, I think that's how we do the work of love. We begin loving ourselves and loving ourselves you know, with every ounce of power that we have. And, and then that begins to love outward. And then often that love gets reflected back. But when, we, when we're got an empty bucket and we're going to other empty buckets, trying to get them to love us, we're just going to get a lot of rejections. And because they got their armor on and they got their weapons out too. 